Hi YouTube, I'm Jeff. And I'm Dana. And this is Dark Moon Metals. In today's video, we're going to try to address a question that was asked on one of our previous videos. And that's basically, how do you go about securing and stick welding small pieces? As you can see, I have a few pieces of scrap laying around that I'm going to be using them for demonstration purposes. Altogether, these pieces average about 9 inches in length. That's my whole pile. And I'm going to show you how to take pieces this small and stick weld them together. So stay tuned. The first thing that you're going to want to do is get yourself a halfway decent vise. The next, a couple of C-clamps. Now, the C-clamps that you want to look for shouldn't have a really big foot on them. This C-clamp is actually pretty close to the same size, and you can see it's got a really big foot, and that takes up a lot more space on your plate. The smaller foot you can find, the better off you're going to be. Get yourself a scrap piece of angle iron about one foot long, and you're going to want to find a metal plate that's the same thickness as the angle iron, and the plate should be at least six inches by four inches. Take your plate and cut a one inch by five inch channel down the middle. Then weld it to your angle iron. Clean up your welds, and make sure that you have clean contact points on your steel. The cleaner you make this, the better. Okay, YouTube, this is what the forked end is for. Basically, if you want to run some kind of a root pass to join two pieces together, you can do it over this open area. Now, this material is 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a 60-10 root pass. I'm going to tack each end and then run my pass. Well, YouTube, it's not the prettiest weld I've ever done. I'm a little bit rusty with the 6010, but that is a 6010 1 8 rod on 3 16 thick mild steel. And as you can see, the weld sits right in the middle of the channel, so I can keep on reusing this jig over and over again. I can save it and use it for something else. Um, you want to make sure that you clamp it in such a way that you can have room to access the work with the electrode. And I also want to point out that this vise is secured firmly to my welding table, and my welding table is solid steel. So my ground strap is actually attached to the table itself. Now the reason I had you guys cut this a bit longer is so if you had to, you can attach the ground strap to either side of this. Um, and there are other ways to use this jig, and I'm going to show you those right now. Okay, here's another configuration. and that is going to be for a corner weld. Okay YouTube, this is pretty much the two pieces that I'm welding together. This is uh, another one. This is two inches by one inch by three sixteenths. I'm going to be using a 7018 one eighth rod. Now keep in mind, when you have it set up like this, you only want to do your tacks on this jig. You don't want to weld the full weld. Well, not the prettiest tacks in the world, but I'm not really using the right size rod for the job. I'm pretty much just using what I've got. But uh, you get the idea. Okay, YouTube, there you go. 
Now, of course, I'm not using the right size electrode to the thickness of material, um, especially for the size. It's not even really giving the electrode too much time to heat up. Now, um, normally I would be using a much thinner electrode, a uh, much thinner diameter core wire for this particular process or this project. And um, but you can understand where I'm trying to go with this, that it is possible to weld um, small pieces of material together with stick. Now let me show you another configuration with the jig. Now, what I've done here is pretty much just flip the jig upside down to give me a little bit of a trough or a V-shape. And as you can see I have two very small pieces of pipe lined up being held in place by two C-clamps. Now each one of these pieces of pipe is eh, right around three inches. Now with this particular type of a setup you want to spot weld one side, then take your time to grind down the spot weld. Then roll it in the V and spot weld the other side. If you try to spot weld more than one side at a time, what can happen is you don't have your pipes lined up straight anymore. Um, the only thing that's holding this straight is the actual wall itself. And if you have a bead and you roll it over and it's not sitting perfectly flat, you're going to get some distortion in the pipe. Do you have the need to make really small T-joints? Well, these are more of my 1 inch by 2 inch pieces. Um, the side, of course, is not ground flat. That's why it's at a little bit of an angle. It's not a perfectly straight cut. But, you know, if you take your time, you clean your pieces right, and you get them shaped right, that would make one heck of a T-joint. And to another common configuration, here's a lap joint. You can see how that's set up. All right, YouTube, there's my little lap joint. Now, like I said before, I would not normally be using a 1 8 rod for material this small. I would use it on material this thick, but definitely not this small. You really want to give the electrode time to heat up and burn into the plate for the start and the stop. Um, but as you can see, that is just a 2 inch little piece of metal, and we were able to create a joint using this particular setup. Well, YouTube, you got to admit, those are some gnarly looking welds. But, like I said before, with the proper materials, I could have made them look a heck of a lot nicer. And, really, this is just me welding on scrap, trying to show the diversity of this particular jig. Now, all you really need is the piece of angle iron, the plate, um, and some way to cut this channel out, whether you use a die grinder or a sawzall or a plasma cutter, whatever you've got. So this is the basic shape you're looking for, and it is really, really versatile. Um, I've used this for quite a few different things in the past. So get yourself a halfway decent vise, and make sure that if your vise is covered in paint or something like that, you want to make sure you leave yourself enough room so you can ground to either side here, because you, your ground is extremely important. Uh, my ground, like I said before, grounds right to the table. After that, get yourself a nice halfway decent pair of clamps, try to get as small of a footprint as you can, and, uh, and see what you can do with this. And I'd like to see if anybody has any uh, video responses or other different configurations that they've come up with, uh, different things that they've welded together, or even different jigs that you've come up with. You know, post a video response, throw us a comment. We truly would appreciate it. Okay, YouTube, that brings us to an end of another video. Now, as I stated before, this video was generated because someone had asked us a question on our channel. Now, we are more than happy to answer any questions we can, whether it's through a simple text reply or through making a video like this one. We truly do appreciate your comments, your questions, and your views. So if you like our channel, please subscribe, visit our website, and check us out on Facebook. But for now, we're going to leave you to the rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Jeff. And I'm Dana. And this is Dark Moon Metals. We'll see you again soon.